Synolytics, another big piece of our longevity wheel. Absolutely. <laughs> Talk to us about synolytics. What are they about? Well, lytic means break or kill, and the seno means senescent cells. So it's really about senescent cells and the prevention of senescent cells. Uh, so the question is, what is senescence? Yeah, and right. so senescence is when a cell goes into cell cycle rest. It stops growing, it stops reproducing. So what goes along with that? Now you, we have to know why does it do that and what happens when it does that? And you think, well, it just stops growing, all right, and it just sits there. But unfortunately, mm -hmm. it goes into a very negative mode. It changes morphology and it gets into a, uh, you know, a sort of a nefarious shape mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. gets these little tentacles and starts releasing uh, pro-inflammatory compounds. And that's called the senescence-associated secretory phenotype. The phenotype is changing its shape mm -hmm. and it's secreting these pro inflammatory mo mo molecules. One of the bad things that those do, I mean, it's chronic inflammaging, okay. but it also recruits other cells into that uh, senescent phenotype. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's kind of this question like, well, why the heck does it do that? Well, right, because wasn't, doesn't it originally do that for a protective yeah, measure? Yeah, it's, it's a cancer prevention. Huh? It's a tumor suppression mechanism. So uh, when it's and it's when it senses damage into the DNA mm -hmm. that's irreparable, that's not being repaired, it puts it into this cell cycle arrest so that it doesn't go into the uh, immortalization that is tumors. Right. And so, so it's like, grow. okay, yeah. that's good. Mm -hmm. But then why does it secrete all these pro inflammatory cytokines? Right. Because when it starts doing that, you get enough cells to do that. Then you start polluting the terrain around it with this inflammation and acidification, and you can create tumors then. Mm. So why is it putting all these things out? Well, there's two types of senescence, acute and chronic senescence. Acute senescence is done often during injury repair. Mm -hmm. And it's done for, will do senescence for a reason, and a whole bunch of senescent cells will stop doing what they're doing so that you can fix other things. And then they'll secrete a bunch of these pro-inflammatory cytokines to recruit immune cells to come and eat them. Mm. And then we'll make new cells. Right. So it's very controlled. But then these one-off cells that are in this zombie phase are creating this inflammaging, but it's not enough for the homing of the immune cells to come and find them and kill them. Mm. So why do they become senescent? Right. Well, it's damage, it's stressors. It's mostly toxic type of damage. So oxidative stress does this. Telomere damage, and then when we talk about telomeres, we'll see what damages telomeres. Well, things like toxins and oxidative stress, <laughs> and so we've seen that things like you know your big four: cadmium, arsenic, mercury, lead. Things like uh, the flame retardants, the PDBEs. All of these can be triggers for senescence. Now, a lot of how they do that is by DNA damage, and then DNA damage, say in the absence of NAD. Right, because NAD is what's coming in to repair your DNA. So if you have DNA damage uh, from all these stressors, but you don't have enough NAD to come and repair it, mm. boom, you're going to flip over into senescence. Wow. So it's all connected, all yeah, part of the wheel. Totally connected. <laughs> and uh, so then one of the interesting things is I was looking at mm -hmm. this, I'm like, why do they move into that weird shape? So you got these round cells, and then all of a sudden they got these spikes coming off of them. I'm like, that looks like an activated microglia. So then I start looking down that path mm -hmm. of neurodegeneration, and sure enough, a senescent microglia is what's responsible, uh, as it's believed now, for most of the neurodegeneration. And it's very similar to the activated microglia that you get in neuroinflammation. Mm -hmm. And in fact, it furthers the process of neuroinflammation. I think we'll find that it's the same kind of stress trigger that 
makes them go into a mode they're not supposed to go into where they start releasing all these pro-inflammatory cytokines. So uh, senescence is a big thing in neurodegeneration. Mm. It's a big thing in metabolic degeneration. Mm. So there's two ways to fix it. You either repair the senescence, you can recover it back okay. into a normal cell, okay. but that means you're going to have to take away the stressor, right. take away the toxins, awesome. you know, whatever it is that's coming mm -hmm. in and doing it. In fact, they find that, you know, having a better detox system, mm -hmm. having more antioxidants, those can repair. What about raising NAD? Raising NAD, I bet, will totally help mm. repair that because that works on the antioxidant side and the and the you know uh, the mitochondrial side because the mitochondrial death actually that's where senescence generates from. Oh. So it first triggers the mitochondria to stop generating energy mm -hmm. and then start releasing the uh, pro-inflammatory cytokines that are part of the SASP mm. okay. phenotype. Yep. So all that stuff goes downhill and the whole system goes downhill. So we either have to recover those cells or we have to kill them. And that's the senolytic. And so the research around those, you'll hear research about things like quercetin, facetin, luteolin, okay. uh, curcumin as senolytics. Okay. Anything else we need to know? I don't know. That was a lot. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Shea. Thank you.